It was 31 years ago that Ajahn Suat received the offer to purchase the land that became Wat Metta, and he asked me to help. It took me a year or two finish my business in Thailand, get over a couple of bouts of malaria, and then it was 30 years ago that I came here. And I was attracted by several things that he said. One was that we're here not to get anybody, but we're here to get ourselves. In other words, we weren't planning to make any changes in the Dharma, make any changes in the Vinaya to please people. If you really want to get yourself, in other words, find true happiness for yourself, you have to stick to the Dharma and the Vinaya as it was taught, or as John Mun would say, practicing the Dharma in line with the Dharma, a theme that John Sawat himself would often repeat. He said, we're here to practice. If other people find that practice is good and they're, they like it and they like to practice too, they're welcome. He wanted this to be a place where people of all races, all nations, all languages, all, show, all levels of the society could come and find the Dharma, because the Dharma is there for everybody. It speaks to what we have in common, the fact that we all create suffering for ourselves. But there are skills that we can all develop to put an end to that suffering. So we wanted this to be a place where everybody who was intent on the Dharma would feel welcome. That's what we've tried to maintain now for the past 30 years. He was able to stay with us for five years, went back to Thailand, had an automobile accident which paralyzed him from the base of the spine on down. He came to visit a couple of times after that, but largely it's been a matter of trying to maintain what he established and let it grow. He had a sense of the importance of this place when we were designing the buildings. He told the architect, remember, this is an important place you're designing here. This is where the Dharma is coming to America. And it's a Dharma that leads to harmony, which is something our country needs a lot of. Because we're looking for happiness not in terms of wealth or status or praise or sensual pleasures. We're looking for happiness in, in things that don't create boundaries. Because when you're looking for happiness in wealth and status, you create boundaries. You gain, somebody else loses. They gain, you lose. Whatever there's loss, there's resentment. But when you look for happiness in terms of generosity, virtue, meditation, you're not taking anything away from anyone else. You're developing resources you have within yourself, and then you have more to share. This is the kind of the happiness that does not create boundaries, does not create strife. It's the kind of happiness that brings us all together, again, at the point that we have in common. This is where our interests intersect. This is the real intersection where we all realize that we have to train ourselves. And it's encouraging to have people people who are also training themselves. As you go out in the world outside, and there's very little training going on, unless you say there are people training themselves in greed, aversion, and delusion, aggravating it more and more. Here we're trying to train ourselves in virtue, concentration, discernment, and ultimately for the sake of release. This is what gives meaning to this place. The meaning, of course, is starts with the fact that we've all built this voluntarily. Nobody forced anybody to come here, nobody forced anyone to give. We all gave of our free will. But again, because it was something that drew us together, regardless of our background, that's why we've been able to build what we've got, maintain what we've got. So, now that we have this place, let's try to maintain it and find a happiness that erases boundaries, a happiness that speaks to everybody's common problem. Why is it that we all want happiness, but we're all creating suffering for ourselves and for one another? We look to the Buddha's teachings, we look to the example of the Ajans. We see that okay, the Buddha has given a good prescription for how we can change the world for the better by focusing on the problems that we're creating from within. If each person were to focus on his or her own problems from within, following the Buddhist teachings, there would be no strife, there would be no conflict in the world. But we can't wait for the rest of the world to see that. We have to start. And it's in this way that we get ourselves. But we get ourselves in a way that's not selfish. We set a good example for others, we provide encouragement. 
And this way we help one another on the path. It's the fact that we're helping one another. That's what keeps a place like this going. And John Lee was on one time talking about how, as a as a teacher, his favorite food was his students. In other words, seeing the the good that they were doing, the progress that they were making, that was what gave him energy to keep on going. That's what fed his heart, fed his mind. So in this way, we provide good food for one another as we practice. We see other people are practicing too. That's encouraging. So we stick with the practice, and this is how we get ourselves in a way that everybody benefits.